All right, what's going on? I want to take the concepts that I explored in this video to the next level, but at the same time, I don't want to get too into the weeds with it because there's a wide variety of different levels of awareness that could potentially listen to this video. Meaning even something like what I described here would be too much for some people to understand or fully comprehend the implications of. I can sit here and try to explain to you the concept of controlled opposition over and over again in a variety of different ways, and I've tried to do that so that anyone can understand the concept of it and why they would want to do it. But still, just as I learned from my own experience, there's going to be certain periods of time when you're just getting into this information and considering it for the first time where it doesn't matter what anyone says to you, you're simply not going to entertain the idea that the people that are giving you the quote-unquote truth were actually put there by the system to tell you certain things that are true but also mislead you at the same time. It's a little like Stockholm Syndrome. You come to love your captor, and human beings are loyal like this in a certain way where you have this personality who was the one who made you aware of this certain thing and that unlocked all these other things for you and so you have a certain amount of loyalty to that person and you don't want to believe that their intentions were not pure so you would actually fight someone like me on that issue if I came to you and said look this person is not who they claim they are <laughs> you would if you're at this level, say, oh, why would you say something like that? And then come up with reasons for why I might do that that have nothing to do with the reality, but those are the justifications that you're making in your mind to keep that bond that you feel with this person or entity on the Internet. You don't want to believe that it's true. And that's so ironic, right, because you're coming from a place that's very similar when you believed everything that you saw on television or learned in school and someone might have come to you when you were in that mindset and said oh hey that thing you think you know actually isn't true and you don't want to believe it <laughs> and so you come up with the reasons for why that person is not telling you the truth or can't be right or you just simply let it go in one ear and out the other and you don't pay it any more attention I actually had moments like that looking back on my life where before I knew anything, I had different people tell me certain things about events that had transpired, and I just didn't have the ability to even comprehend what they were saying to me. It kind of really did just go in one ear and out the other, and I never paid it any attention after that. I kind of just buried it down somewhere deep and pretended like I never heard it. And in the spirit of that type of analysis, I want to go deeper down this rabbit hole today and start by going to a subreddit on Reddit titled Subsimulator GPT-2. What is Subsimulator GPT-2? This is a subreddit in which all posts except for this one, and comments are generated automatically using a fine-tuned version of the GPT-2 language model developed by OpenAI. What is GPT-2? Well, how to build OpenAI's GPT-2, the AI that was too dangerous to release. And we go down here in this article, States here, I'll show you how exactly humanity's greatest text generator, at the time of this writing at least, works, and how to build your own in just a few lines of code. 
Note, however, that the GPT-2 model that we're going to build won't start generating fake Brexit campaigns. The original model was trained for months, harnessing the power of 100 plus GPUs. So unless you've got that kind of computing power, it's a feat if your mini GPT can get subject verb agreements right. What GPT-2 actually is. As has become the norm when there is a breakthrough in deep learning research, there's been a fair share of Terminator imagery accompanying popular articles that describe OpenAI's latest set of matrix multiplications. So I thought I'll start by clearing a few things up. GPT-2 stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 2. Generative means the model was trained to predict or generate the next token in a sequence of tokens in an unsupervised way. In other words, the model was thrown a whole lot of raw text data and asked to figure out the statistical features of the text to create more text. Pre-trained means OpenAI created a large and powerful language model which they fine-tuned for specific tasks like machine translation later on. This is kind of like transfer learning with ImageNet except it's for NLP. This retraining approach became quite popular in 2018 and is very likely to be a trend that continues throughout 2019. Transformer means OpenAI used the Transformer architecture as opposed to RNN, LSTM, GRU, or any other three, four letter acronym you have in mind. Two means this isn't the first time they're trying this whole thing out. Now, let me say that I am a complete novice when it comes to technology like this. I really don't understand it. I mean, I understand the concept and what it's doing, but I can't tell you how it works. So I have to read articles like this even to just get an idea of what's going on here. And based on that limited perspective that I have, what I presume is going on here is that GPT-2 is a language model where you feed in all of this raw data and then the algorithm allows the program to run so that it takes all of that data and combines it together in a way where you can create a script that allows content to be auto-generated based on that data that was input into it. So for example, if you input a bunch of raw data from Reddit, and then like in this subreddit, you create a bunch of different programs based on the data. So these are bots that are related to different subreddits. And so you feed the data in and then the program itself, which is based on this OpenAI GPT-2 technology, will create a post that looks just like it was made by a human. And that includes the responses in the comment section. So to wrap your mind around what's going on here, you have to understand that every single one of these posts was not done by a human being. It was data fed into a language learning model that is scripted with code in a way that these posts are auto-generated with no human input. <laughs> and when you start reading the titles and the comments, this is a mind-blowing thought experiment because unless you know that this is what you're looking at, for example, unless you know that you're in this subreddit, if you viewed these posts in the wild of Reddit without that knowledge, you could easily be convinced that it was a real person who made this post. And that's what I meant by going down the rabbit hole further from just fake view subscribers and comments on YouTube. Uh, we're talking about a level of deception that is way beyond that. We're talking about posts that are so sophisticated that you think it's a human being, but it's actually some program that's running in the comment section of YouTube or Instagram or Twitter to the point where you think it's a real human, but it's not. And obviously that's a whole nother layer to this beyond the click farms or the 
other programs they have running where it's actual human beings that are in sweatshops, essentially, the equivalent of that for computers where they're spending all day long watching videos, clicking on links to drive traffic and increase views and increase comments and subscribers to give the illusion of popularity. And obviously those click farms are outsourcing from people who are buying their services. And this is where you get the programs that will allow you to buy YouTube likes or subscribers for a certain amount of money. That's all going on, but then this is another layer on top of that where we're moving into territory where you don't even have to have that set up. You can just put your code into the wild on the internet and it will produce human-like content and no one will be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I mean, it's wild stuff. So for example, uh, let's just read some of these. If people can be so mean online, then why don't they come out on the streets and punch you for real? That's in uh, Shower Thoughts type of subreddit. Something like this would be posted. And then you go to the comment section. And the first response here, because it's easier to go after people who can't fight back. Response, they need to be punched more often. Response, yeah, but they still do it. Now, we can see that these are all bots making these comments. So it's easy for us to know that this isn't actually a real person. But if you go through the thought exercise of putting different usernames here, and then imagining this thread, you could actually be convinced that this was all actual human beings with computers or phones who were on Reddit just typing something out and having some conversation with themselves. I've been on this sub for a while and I'm having a hard time comprehending the point of it. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever read here and that's a typical response that you would find on Reddit. Uh, because sites like Reddit are designed to inflame. They're designed to spread toxic negative energy. That's not to say that you can't find useful information on sites like this or that they don't serve a purpose in that way. But as the years progress, uh, sites like Reddit get further and further away from their original design and the original intention behind them. I mean, Reddit itself is about to IPO, and so all of the changes that are being made to Reddit are along those lines. They're trying to be more and more corporate friendly in their design and approach because they're going to be a publicly traded company. And obviously, all of the psychological operations online serve a wide variety of purposes, but one of the purposes of the GameStop psychological operation was to put Wall Street bets and Reddit in the public mind further as they gear up towards the IPO. When Wall Street bets had a major increase in subscribers and it really got Reddit into the mainstream news. But knowing that these aren't real human beings, if you read it with that knowledge in mind, you can pick it apart and say, yeah, there's just something missing here where it's not quite how actual people would interact. And then this, of course, gets us to the most important salient point here, which is if the technology has been advanced for language models to the point where some average Redditor who's good with code can create their own subreddit where there is plausible simulations of human interaction taking place. Well, where is the rest of the technology at? In other words, we know how this works we know that something like this doesn't come into the public domain unless it's been in existence for many decades in government and other black budget type realms.
And so we have to ask the question, if it's advanced enough for this to be taking place on Reddit via the mind of just one average person, <laughs> then we have to ask the question, well, hold on a second now, how far advanced is this technology in other contexts? Is it possible that I've already been interacting with bots or computer algorithms on YouTube, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Instagram without my knowledge? Is the technology to the point where it passed that Turing test? Now the Turing test is visually focused in terms of, oh, does this AI image or this uh, robot pass my ability to sense whether or not it's an actual human being. But just imagine it in the context of reading something that's supposedly being posted by another human being. Is it to the point where they would be able to fool me? And I think this is a really good thought exercise to go into if you're going to be on the internet a lot, especially going forward, because like I said, the internet is designed to promote a toxic energy. It's designed to get you all riled up and agitated so that you take that energy out into the world with you. Meaning so that your interactions with people are inhibited in a way to where you have all these ideas in your mind about what real people quote unquote are saying and doing and posting on the internet. And then by association, you want to put those ideas onto just the strangers that you meet in public on a daily basis or the people that you interact with at work or work, whatever the case may be. And in this way, no real communication takes place. And this is why there's so much division that's promoted on the Internet now. I mean, of course, the division was promoted on television before the Internet and in books. <laughs> but now it's just this is the primary way that everybody interacts with each other and gets their information. So this is where they focus their efforts. But you really got to take a step back and think now, well, hold on a second. If there's something that's being promoted heavily by all of the major corporate media outlets, and I'm seeing all of these posts supporting that narrative on the social media sites, I have to ask myself, are these actual real people? Am I looking at this account that has a real name and a real picture attached to it of a seemingly real person, and I see them type something that just makes my mouth drop open like I can't believe someone would actually say that which is not to say people are not capable of doing and saying things like that still but you gotta ask yourself if it's in the context of something that's being promoted especially if it divides people along racial or cultural or socio-economical lines if it's something that's divisive in that way, you really got to take a step back and say, hold on a second. Do most people actually think like this? Are there a lot of people who actually think like this? Or is this something that's being orchestrated by technology that I don't yet understand? That is mimicking human beings that are real, but is actually just what is going on in this subreddit, a simulation. But I've said uh, for years now, I've tried to point out the idea that is it possible Edward Snowden is a completely CGI character? That would be one of the first examples of them putting something like this out in the wild, this completely fabricated CGI character that is pretending to be a real human being. And the illusion in that context would be very in-depth, right? Because he's given many interviews, but they're all over the internet for the most part. Of course, there's been a couple interviews where he was allegedly in the same room as another journalist, but those journalists that were interviewing him are all a part of the agenda, too, and they wouldn't tell you that was going on if that's what it really was in any event. So that doesn't mean anything. But I think it's a really good question. Uh, Edward Snowden has been on the scene for eight years now. He's one of the most famous whistleblowers on the planet. 
and he's living in Russia, and I assume that Russians are allowed to have cell phones just like the rest of the world. So surely Edward Snowden would be out and about doing things on a daily basis, and some Russian would see Edward Snowden and get out his phone and record his friend shaking his hand or uh, taking a picture with him, right? But yet in eight years, there is no footage like this that has ever been put out regarding Edward Snowden. Nothing. And so I have no reason to back down from the suspicion that I have in my gut that I had from the moment I saw the first image of him, that there's something not right there. Now, of course, that could have just been my intuition, knowing about controlled opposition, knowing how it works. Like, okay, hey, here's another fake person they're putting out there for all of these reasons that I won't go into, but maybe it was that intuition. But I, still, there was something deeper about it when I first saw his image and I just knew something was off <laughs> and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And actually that was what got me to start my blog in the first place. And YouTube in general was that issue. So I don't know when you look at the movies and the CGI characters that they put out there, they did Carrie Fisher who uh, plays princess Leia in the star Wars franchise they did CGI versions of her. Uh, they did Paul Walker. They've done a few others here and there. And if you know that it's CGI, you can spot the flaws and see, yeah, that's not quite a real person yet. But that's my whole point that I was getting into about where the technology is. I mean, that's just what they're allowing to be out there in movies. And it's pretty passable for a human being. But it's like if that's what they're capable of as far as the general population is allowed to know is in existence well what are they capable of behind the scenes that they developed 20 30 years ago 50 years ago right the first bot one of the first bots developed by mit was in 1966 it was called eliza 1966 that's almost 60 years ago one of the first bots that was the precursor to bots like that are being used in the GPT-2 language model from OpenAI that are now to the point where an average person can take the code and create something that pretty similarly represents what you can find on Reddit. So we're kind of talking about a similar thing to maybe what's going on with Edward Snowden. And again, I don't know if he's actually CGI. They could always unveil some public appearance of him at some point in the future and discredit everything that I'm saying now. And I would welcome them to do that. Please do that so I can rest knowing that it's not some CGI character that they've developed to the point where they can uh, convince the majority of the gullible population that this is actually a real person. But it's similar along those lines that this would be the written version of that, if that is actually what is taking place. This is a simulation that looks very much like a human being. And of course, their version of it, like Edward Snowden, would be way more advanced than this. But we have to entertain the idea that it's entirely possible. And if you think about it, it would make propaganda easier to distribute and it would make it easier to disrupt organic conversations that are taking place about subjects that they don't want people discussing because it would uh, be totally keyword based, right? I mean, this is how the algorithms on YouTube work. They crawl for keywords and then they take your videos down based on those keywords. So you can imagine a forum like Reddit or Twitter or Instagram, certain keywords are put out there and then that triggers this program that automatically sends bots in who start posting all of this nonsense that is totally unrelated from what was posted, but they're just trying to put divides and wedges into people. So they don't care. They're just trying to distract from what is actually taking place. And that would be much more efficient as we get into a more automated society than having your agents who are on the internet with a bunch of different accounts and they're fallible, they're human, right? So they can make mistakes and get caught and 
they could whistle blow. You know, you have all kinds of potential issues there that would be alleviated if you could just use a program to do what the human was doing and you could do it much faster than how your human agents were able to do it. But uh, speaking of human agents, before going further, this is a, actually a post from Reddit where someone was talking about this subject. And they say, they have accounts pre-made, most with lots of history. Some accounts would be new, and they encourage you to post in off-topic subreddits to seem genuine. And that's what I was uh, talking about here, right? When you click on the history of one of these accounts, this is Shower Thoughts GPT-2. This is a bot, uh, but it's acquired all of this artificial karma from posting and commenting. And then you have this history that you go through. And if it had an actual name here and you saw this history and it was posting in a bunch of different subreddits as opposed to just the one that it's programmed to post in, you could be convinced that this was a real person. And so before the bot issue even came into being, they were doing this with human agents. They would have these accounts they would go post in all the off-topic threads so that when someone checked up on them when they made an obvious shill post in a forum and you went and looked at their history you might say well maybe this is just somebody who's not quite at the level where they understand what's going on yet i'll give them the benefit of the doubt <laughs> and so they do that and then on top of all that they're actually making accounts like these and then selling them so you buy the Reddit accounts that have a prefabricated history, and then you use that account to shill for something. So you really have to take a step back and think about what it is you're actually reading on the internet, no matter what the context is. I mean, this is going on with Amazon reviews, if you're buying something on that website. And we'll get into that further as I read another article about all of this, but this goes on here. Uh, as much time is spent building up account histories to look legitimate as there is shilling, so much of it was just normal Reddit participation with wrong think restrictions. There were multiple accounts, VPNs provided, and there were no tickets in like my actual IT career, but it was organized through MS Teams with ticket style requests and activities. Time wasn't logged. Typically your team leader who has access to other documents we don't through a different Teams page We'll share some marketing material and talking points. Each account's post history is reviewed by somebody else, and they delete post accounts accordingly. You have to sign an NDA, and that explains why a lot of this is not more well known. I wasn't a political shill, but I shilled for a product called Tile, which is a nifty little device that has saved me so much time and headache. I'm joking, the product sucks, and the reviews are artificial. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, so yeah, this is a real account from somebody who actually did this for a corporation. And of course, the corporations would be involved in this type of deception as well, because the younger generations are kind of hip to corporate PR and corporate advertising, and we're kind of aware of the scam of it all. So we're less susceptible to advertising and marketing than prior generations. However, if you can make it seem like something is being promoted in an organic fashion by real people, which you would do by having these fake accounts that you control and these fake influencers that you control <laughs> or paid influencers that you control promoting your product, but they do it in a way where it seems organic like they just really like this thing and now they're promoting it so they engage in advertising and marketing in that way now because they're more likely to be influential to the people that they're targeting with it because it seems more real it seems more in line with what these uh, younger people experience being on the internet and interacting it seems real or more real um, unless you're really just tuned into what's going on and you can see through this stuff immediately, which I promise you, you'll get there eventually if you're not there yet. 
I mean, I see this stuff and it's just instantaneous <laughs> at this point. And I spend most of my day just laughing at what I'm reading because I know what it is. Or I know the true agenda behind it. So anyway, uh, this is going on with human assets and agents. I mean, this is just an example of a corporation using it. But if they're using it, we know that the military psychological operations divisions are using this in every facet that you can imagine as a part of the propaganda campaigns that they are tasked with enforcing or distracting from in some way. And I should say, you know, I don't want to make you super paranoid to the point where everything that you read, you're just saying, oh, that's a bot. <laughs> that's not a real person. No, that would be counterproductive. You want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but just do that in the context of your own intuition. You can usually tell if you're interacting with a real person for the most part. You know, there's signs that you can rely on and you want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but you also want to be aware that this is going on. Uh, it's that old saying, you want to have an open mind, but not so open that your head falls out, right? So we kind of want to be somewhere in the middle here. But I don't want to make you super paranoid like every single thing you see is something along these lines. That it's not a real person actually posting it. But this is an epidemic that is going on on the internet and it's only getting worse as the social media companies continue to censor what is allowed to be posted. And so the... gaps that are left by all the real people leaving these platforms are being replaced by artificial intelligence, literally, <laughs> giving the illusion of popularity and interaction. Because that's all that advertisers care about, is the illusion of popularity, and then they will give their money to these platforms to advertise on them. So it's this twisted cycle that's going on where the fake numbers support more money and then the money supports more fake numbers <laughs> and then you're in this situation where you're completely removed from reality and you have all of these people that are being paid to say things that aren't true and it's just this totally fake reality that's been created on the internet now and that's why i'm you know reinforcing this stuff over and over again and especially trying to reinforce the idea of that negative energy that it's trying to put into you i mean you really just got to turn the computer off for a long stretch of time every now and then to recalibrate and get your bearings back or it will consume you and just out of nowhere you'll find yourself depressed why am i depressed life is amazing oh right i've been on the internet reading garbage for the past few days <laughs> i mean it's a perfectly uh, reasonable explanation for why this is going on so uh let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of this just to build upon what i was uh, talking about this is from the intelligencer how much of the internet is fake? Studies generally suggest that year after year, less than 60% of web traffic is human. Some years, according to some researchers, a healthy majority of it is bots. For a period of time in 2013, the Times reported this year, a full half of YouTube traffic was bots masquerading as people. A portion so high that employees feared an inflection point, after which YouTube's systems for detecting fraudulent traffic would begin to regard bot traffic as real and human traffic as fake. They called this hypothetical event the inversion. And we might be pretty close to that taking place now. Uh, this was from 2013, but we might be back to that point pretty soon. Uh, this is from The Atlantic. The internet is mostly bots. More than half of web traffic comes from automated programs, many of them malicious. Now, of course, a publication like the atlantic is going to have a different definition of malicious than you and i would <laughs> and i'll get to that uh, at the end here but this actually does raise a good point in the first couple paragraphs look around you people of the internet the bots they're everywhere most website visitors aren't humans but are instead bots or programs built to do automated tasks they are the worker bees of the internet and also the henchmen some bots help refresh your Facebook feed or figure out how to rank Google search results. Other bots impersonate humans and carry out devastating DDoS attacks. Overall, bots, good and bad, are responsible for 52% of web traffic, 
According to a new report by the security firm Imperva, which issues an annual assessment of bot activity online. So yeah, this is raising a good point from the beginning that some of this bot activity is actually effective. It increases efficiency and it indeed is what has allowed the internet to become what it is now by having all of these automated programs and software algorithms working without human supervision for the most part other than when it breaks down and it needs to be tweaked or improved but when it's actually running it doesn't need any kind of supervision and this has allowed technology to sort of compound on itself and become more and more efficient and hold more and more information which obviously increases what you can do with it so that part of the bot networks that are out there is actually a good thing in the way that it's well, that's debatable, of course, but you know what I mean. It's uh, in the limited context of technology, it's a good thing. As someone who is involved in that space would view it, yes, this is very beneficial. But obviously, we're talking about something different where they're taking that same technology and now they're using it to fake actual real human beings to influence and promote the agendas that they want to promote, to make you think that more people are supporting certain agendas than they actually are. And this is becoming more and more evident as you talk to people in the real world about things that are going on because it's not reflecting what you're reading on the internet. And obviously, like I said at the beginning, I can't get into that without having this video taken down, but uh, maybe at some point I'll be able to talk about that. So that disclaimer aside about the good part of bots, uh, let's get further into the shady side of it. This is from a really great transcript of a speech, Is Everything on the Internet Fake? by Samuel Scott, March 18th, 2019. Most analytics have found that around 50% of website traffic is bots, not human beings. I could pay money to send a bot to any website and do almost whatever I want. More on that later. So at least half of the numbers in your traffic analytics platforms are fake. Here is how Ellen Pow, the former chief executive of Reddit, put it on Twitter. It's all true. Everything is fake. Also, mobile user counts are fake. No one has figured out how to count logged out mobile users as I learned at Reddit. Every time someone switches cell towers, it looks like another user and inflates company user metrics. So there's just a real simple game that's being played with how many people are actually on these websites. Oh, did you take a trip around uh, your city and access a website at different points in the day? Well, that's going to count as 10 uh, unique visitors when really it was just you. And you can see how that would compound and create a fake inflated view of how many people are actually using these platforms. YouTube, on regular radio, getting a number one hit actually means something, but the New York Times recently found that you can buy 5,000 fake YouTube views of videos for as low as $15, and that's what I got into in this video. And in addition to those who use bot traffic, there are pay-click farms in China that literally consist of people spending their whole work days re-watching the same videos, revisiting the same websites, and downloading the same apps over and over again. You can find videos of these workers online. Seriously, it is factory farms full of workers who just do those things all day long. I mean, there you go. That's 2021. We have factory farms of people who are sitting there just clicking their mouse all day long to make some uh, person, some housewife in the Western world um, think that something is actually popular when it really isn't. <laughs> I mean, it's just total bizarro world that we've been immersed in at this point. In 2017, the Spanish pop hit De Pasito became the most popular song on YouTube with more than 3.4 billion hits. But does that number really mean anything? How many of those hits were bots or people paid to watch the video over and over again? We have no idea. But the New York Times found someone in Canada who made $200,000 in 2018 from selling 15 million fake YouTube views. Not bad work if you can get it, right? Amazon. There are hundreds of Facebook groups with tens of thousands of members who want to buy and sell reviews on Amazon. In one example that BuzzFeed News found, you can get $36 for writing a positive review of a pair of headphones. 
Does a positive review on Amazon by someone you don't know using a real name, even if it is a verified purchase, actually mean anything? I increasingly think no. And I have the same opinion whenever I see comments on Airbnb, Yelp, and every other website. After all, the Washington Post found that 61% of the Amazon reviews of electronics products are fake. <laughs> of course they are, right? I mean, of course it would be like this. Literally, all of this stuff that is involved with the hugest corporations that dominate social media and the internet in general are almost entirely fabricated. And of course it would be like that. Why? Because these are the intelligence agency's babies. Facebook, Amazon, Google, YouTube, Twitter. All of these uh, platforms were created by intelligence agencies. The people that are said to have created them are just the front men. I've said this dozens of times, it feels like, at this point, but I want to hammer that home. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have anything to do with the creation of Facebook, okay? He's just the guy that they put out there. He's the one who takes all of the criticism. Because, of course, they can't come out and say, oh, hey, did you know that this was an intelligence operation, this website called Facebook? Uh, yeah, you're giving all of your information willingly to the intelligence agencies. No, of course they're not going to come out and say that. They're going to pick this guy who's a part of the bloodline named Mark Zuckerberg, and they're going to say he created it in his basement, and then he became an overnight billionaire. Yeah, oh, I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> uh, but anyway, why do they do that? Because this is how they get their babies to win. They inflate the statistics. They play a shell game with how popular they actually are. And then eventually these platforms dominate and get all the advertiser money. And then no one can even imagine competing with them because they're too big. That's how they win. It's that endless loop that I was talking about where you fake the numbers. Then that brings in the ad dollars. And then... That encourages you to fake more numbers, which brings in more ad dollars. And then that's how you become Amazon or Facebook or Google. That's how you win over all of the competitors who might be just regular people that actually want to create a platform that benefits humanity. But no, those aren't the ones that win. No, no, no. <laughs> we make it so ours win always. So that's the real game that's being played here. Even though, yeah, sure, regular people take advantage of it and buy YouTube views and likes and subscribers and smaller companies, you know, source out an advertising firm that then buys Twitter views for their company or Instagram views or whatever to promote some product that they're launching. And so everyone's sort of engaging in it in their own way, but the root of it is to make it so these platforms win that they want to win in the race that was the early 2000s into the last decade, which was the development of Web 2.0 or the Internet in general as we know it. Twitter. The New York Times set up a dummy Twitter account and paid the service $225 for 25,000 followers. I also admit that once when I was in the agency world years ago, I did buy Twitter followers for a client who wanted to increase the company's followers. It is very easy and very cheap, and it was terrible that I did that. I can tell you that as a professional marketing speaker, I know that event organizers often evaluate speakers by their Twitter followings. And some people do buy followers to get a high number even though the followers are only bots. Even though it might hurt my speaking career, I refuse to do that. Oh, good for you, buddy. Research from two universities in America found that up to 15% of Twitter accounts are bots. I mean, I would imagine it's way higher than this now, because I think this was in 2017. Uh, Twitter is the easiest one to fake, right? Because it's limited characters. Everyone's kind of a robot on Twitter. You can't really post in-depth stuff unless you do multiple tweets in a row. And no one pays attention to the multiple uh, threads in a tweet like that, right? That's just how it works with the attention spans. So it would be easy to attach an image to a GPT-2 type language model program that's way more advanced than something some average person on Reddit is doing and have an army of Twitter bots that 
promotes a certain agenda or discredits a certain narrative. And you can see how that would work to influence what people actually think other people are saying or what they're supposed to think about certain issues. Uh, because why would anyone lie to them? I mean, some people are just in that state of mind where they think, why would they lie to me? <laughs> And uh, as they say, ignorance is bliss, right? That's why Cypher wanted to be put back into the Matrix. <laughs> he said, hey, uh, I can't handle all this. Just plug me back in, man. And uh, make me famous also. Give me a lot of money. Make me somebody important. Instagram. The agency Media Kicks once created two fake Instagram accounts. One used images borrowed from a Los Angeles model. The second used free stock photos. Soon, brands offered both of the accounts free products and more than $500. Both brands and followers were duped. So the advertisers can't tell the difference between the fake account with stock photos and the real actual model. And that's the whole point, right? It's getting more and more difficult to tell what is real and what is not. And they are taking advantage of that. And as I've said, we have no idea how advanced this technology is. This article here could have been written by a bot, and I wouldn't even know it. <laughs> even though it's a transcript of a speech, it might have been, actually. They might have fed it through some program that uh, spit this out. Some speech-to-text program. Uh, but yeah, they might be doing that with news articles now. It could be written by uh, GPT-2-type algorithms at this point. And it, they say this is a journalist, but it's actually a, a program, <laughs> you know? We could be at that stage. And I, like I said, I don't know if we're at the stage where they could actually completely fake a person, but maybe they, maybe we are. And, you know, we're so detached from these people and they live in a completely different segment of society than the regular people do that who really interacts with these people? How would we even know? It's, it's really crazy. In another example, Points North Group found that the Ritz-Carlton Hotel's sponsored posts have been published by influencers with followings that were 79% fake. <laughs> That's 80% of their sponsored posts, which I'm sure if you went to the Ritz-Carlton's website, that would be all the five-star responses. This room was great. You should go here. And it's just some influencer who has a completely fake following for the most part. That's... Uh, being paid to put that review up there. Just wild stuff, man. Captivate estimates that brands pay $2,000 for influencers with 100,000 followers and 20,000 for those with a million followers. But the New York Times paid $225 to buy 25,000 followers. That is one cent each. So if you do the math, being a fake influencer can make you a lot of money, but it makes marketers look like idiots. Uh, yeah, if you can sleep at night, good work. If you can get it right, just be a fake influencer, get paid to promote things that you don't even care about in reality. And hey, you don't have to work a real job. So what do you care, right? I mean, that's the <laughs> that's the epitome of do what thou wilt, right? The whole of the law, man. In a way, that's a form of magic, right? creating this existence for yourself uh, magically where you don't have to do anything other than just hit record on a computer or a phone. And then all of this money magically appears in your bank account and you don't have to do anything but lounge around all day and record those videos every once in a while. <laughs> hey, maybe that's just jealousy speaking through me right now. <laughs> but like I said, if you can sleep at night, uh, I think uh, like... Every other celebrity eventually uh, realizes it's not worth the price of admission, selling your soul in that way. And then it goes into, uh, I mean, Netflix is such obvious propaganda at this point, I don't even need to go further. But yes, uh, Netflix viewership numbers <laughs> could be fake. Uh, sure they are. Uh, this is what I was talking about how they, the intelligence agency said is, get their actual sponsored platforms to win. Uh, down here in 2018, researchers found that 11% of all app installations were fake, and that number increased 30% from 2017. So, I mean, it's probably exponential up to like 50% of app installations being fake, which that is in the download store giving the illusion that this is the app that is winning you see and that's how their supported platforms win right the ones that they are in control of 
and that ultimately will go public and become this corporate behemoth that helps no one. <laughs> right? That's how the game is played. <laughs> because in theory, the internet could be used in a decentralized fashion, which would truly benefit the human race. If everything was decentralized and we were using the internet locally to support ourselves in that way. But that's what they want to avoid. That's why they have conglomerated everything together in the, into these massive multinational web corporations that are following the agenda as they are designed to do. Facebook. In September 2016, Facebook admitted that it overstated average video views by 60% to 80% for two years. That same month, an Australian ad magazine obtained Nielsen figures showing a 94% plummet in Facebook video streams in the country due to a correction in how the data was reported. 94%? That's like all of it! Oh my goodness. Also in 2016, Facebook's VP for Europe, Nicola Mendelssohn, said we're seeing a year-on-year -year decline in text. Mark Zuckerberg also said five years to all video. Now there are lawsuits that Facebook allegedly inflated video ad views by up to 900%. For publishers, the pivot to video seems to have been a big mistake that cost countless people their jobs. Facebook also reports a daily active visitor metric for its watch product as someone spending at least one minute on the platform per day. But get this, those 60 seconds do not need to be consecutive. If someone watches one second each of 60 videos, then that is a daily active visitor. <laughs> Seriously. But for Facebook specifically, the issue is more dire. I am sure everyone here knows that Leave won the Brexit vote through an illegal last-minute ad push on Facebook. And because of the nature of Facebook's platform, we do not know exactly who bought what ads, what the ads said, where the money came from, and who saw them. But we do know that the last-minute ad spend was illegal. Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Christopher Wiley once said that when Olympic athletes cheat and win, their victories are taken away. We know that Leave cheated, so why is the Brexit referendum victory not taken away? I just do not understand. I will be more blunt. Foreign states and bad actors pushed enough illegal last-minute winning votes to leave with fake news, fake pages, fake groups, fake people, and fake advertising, and all primarily over Facebook. The results, the fracturing of the European Union and the destabilization of one of the most important democracies in the West. Brexit would not be happening if Facebook did not exist. Donald Trump would not be president of the United States if Facebook did not exist. One week after Parliament's landmark report on fake news and foreign interference through social media, one week after Damian Collins called Facebook digital gangsters, why is that not the top story in every single newspaper and BBC TV radio broadcast? Where is MI5 and MI6? Why are people not rioting in the streets? Where is the government really? I want to know. So this guy's an advertiser and he's coming at it from that lens. So maybe he's not fully aware of the broader context, but he raises a very important point. Specifically, he says Donald Trump would not be president of the United States if Facebook did not exist. Well, we know that Donald Trump was selected to be president from the moment he was born. I mean, everything was aligned perfectly for him to eventually serve this role for the bloodline system. So we know that he would have been president no matter what. It's just in the context of where we are, in hindsight, when he was elected, we can say, oh, it was Facebook, because that's how we were all interacting with each other at by that point in time. But the good point that he raises in that context is that increasingly the mainstream media is attributing the bot problem to foreign states, like the American mainstream press, is consistently saying that, oh, it's this foreign state and bad actor that is engaging in these fake news accounts, the fake pages, the bots. They're the ones that are doing it. And it's so funny, right? If you're on the left, they tell you it's Russia. And if you're on the right, they tell you it's China. So they have their own boogeyman for each side. And then there's never any sort of consensus between the two sides because they're saying, oh, no, that was actually the Russian influence in the election that did it. And then the other side's like, oh, no, that's the Chinese influence that did it in the last election. <laughs> it's so easy to manipulate people. I just stand back in awe of it sometimes. That Really, that's all you had to do to manipulate people? <laughs> 
But it's like, have you guys ever heard of a VPN? Do you know how easy it would be to create a digital uh, trail that uh, led to Russia or China for a specific agenda so that the press could say, oh, look, it was Russians or, oh, look, it was the Chinese. <laughs> Do you see how easy that is? It could be anyone anywhere in the world creating that paper trail. And you got to remember the people creating the paper trails or the digital trails in this case are the ones who have all the back doors who, like I said, created the programs in the first place. They can make it say whatever they want it to say. <laughs> so... The whole thing's very convoluted, but this is a very important way that they're trying to start twisting this narrative. Yes, we have this clear evidence of an increasing use of AI and GPT-2 type programs, and we don't know where they're at with this stuff, how advanced it really is. But now, as that information comes out, they have all the information out there they have the foundation laid for us to blame a foreign state for this as if our government and the people that are in control of that government wouldn't be engaged in it too <laughs> wouldn't be using that on facebook twitter instagram youtube themselves right that's the game that's being played <clears throat> excuse me i'm starting to lose my voice <clears throat> and so you see an example of this uh Twitter bots are a major source of climate disinformation. Such accounts can distort online conversations and potentially diminish support for climate policy. So what are they doing now? Oh, well, they're saying that it's Twitter bots that are contributing to the disinformation that's pointing stuff like that out. And then they tie that in to foreign states, bad actors, digital gangsters who are doing this and who are a danger to democracy, right? That's how they're going to spin the narrative. And they might even take that one step further in the future with some kind of cyber attack that they will blame on one of these foreign nations. And that will further tie into the digital social credit apparatus that they want to build. And that will tie into everything else that I can't mention. And it's all coalescing together in that way. I hope you see that. They will have the foundation laid for why we need to remove anonymity from the internet. So that's it for now. Uh, I highly encourage you to check out this subreddit and go through the exercise of reading these posts with the understanding and the mind-blowing fact that no human was involved in posting any of this, any of the posts or the comments. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but uh, I'll leave it there. Hope you guys have a good one. Later.